Praise the Lord, church. Let us sing these songs together. All the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord, for He is worthy of our praise, of our praise. from the throne of grace that I will not be just the speaker or you will be the hearer but you will be the door of the one at the end of the day in Jesus name Amen. we bless you because you are God minister life to all this morning oh God in Jesus name I pray Amen. Amen I do not take this privilege for granted I want to thank our mommy for giving me the chance to come before you to share the word of the Lord and uh, I want to title the message and forgive me I'm from Nigeria and Ibadoman the way I pronounce it just take it like that where I was from we call it T-O-T-A-L which is Tota right but I'm so I'm sure our children will say Tutu my son always tell me daddy you are not pronouncing it well well I'm an Ibadoman just take take it like that amen praise the Lord so uh, the title of the message says Total trust, if you, if it is total to you, but to me, total trust in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Total trust in God. Amen. I'm sure with the background we all had when growing up, and we believe so much in God, I'm sure we must have met a pastor, a prophet, and they will pray for you and they will tell you, ah. I saw a vision in your future. This will happen. That will happen. Of course, I've had so many messages from pastors and prophets and prophetess before. And they tell me, God is going to do great. God is going to do this. God is going to do that. And, which, and there is a saying in our language that if you know the day God will bless you, that it is next year, you will go back to your house and begin to sleep that. See, this next year, the day God is going to bless me. Let me just sit down sleep, eat. Then when God bless me, then I enjoy life. Praise the Lord. But we do not know. So also, when they give you messages, they give you revelations. They only tell you what is going to happen in the future. They don't tell you the process. Amen. And because of this, some people will just give up that. We've been here. I remember my dad before he died. When I'm preaching, he said, keep quiet. I'm older than you. I'm your father. They've been saying, Jesus will come. Since I was young, he never came. We are still waiting. I said, well, he will come someday. Praise the Lord. So also, some people, they just get discouraged. They've been telling me it's going to be better. But I'm still struggling. What is going on? But I've come to you this morning that what you are seeing is the process, not actual message, but it will come if only you can trust totally in God and he will do it for you in Jesus' name. There are some cases like that in the Bible. I want us to open our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 37. The book of Genesis 37 from verse, verses 5 to 11. I'm going to read quickly. <clears throat> Genesis 37 
5 to 11. And Jesus, I mean, sorry, and Joseph dreamt a dream. He, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I prayed you, this dream which I have dreamt. For behold, we were abiding shelves in the field, and lo, my shelves arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your shelves stood around about, and made hopes to my shelf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren. And he said, Behold, I have dreamt a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made up sense to me. And he told it to his father and his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to it? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Praise the Lord. When I was reading this passage, the point I wanted from it is different from some of the things I discovered. When I was reading, I remember when I was growing up, I always tell people I'm from a family where we have a father and seven wives. And out of all the children, I was the favorite of my dad. When he's going somewhere, he will take me along. If he's eating, he will call me to come and join me because he eats like a king. There's a lot of food. And others will be watching. And because of that, my brothers, my elders, even my younger ones, they hated me so much. I didn't understand it. I, it was later I began to understand what was going on. Hey, are, are you the only one? And which I will be eating and I will be looking at them and I will see to concentrate. And even up to now, some of them didn't forgive me that. Were you not the one enjoying that dad when he was alive? Praise the Lord. So, that, that is not the point anyway, but at the same time, I want to advise us, pray it. There, there shouldn't be any preferential treatment among your children. You love them equal. Praise the Lord. Or else they will hate each other. And you do, you will not know. Those things will be resting inside their unconscious mind. And when they grow up, they will, then it will become a behavior and an attitude towards one another. Praise the Lord. God help us as we understand this in Jesus' name. So, uh, Joseph, he had, he dreamt of how God is going to promote him, that the brothers will bow before him, even the parents. But he never dreamt of how the brothers will sell him into slavery. He never dreamt of how the boss wife will lie against him. He never dreamt of how he was going to spend some of years of his life inside the prison. Praise the Lord. So also, when they give us visions, but we must have this understanding. Even Jesus said, once you accept me as your personal Lord and Savior, automatically you become the, uh, the devil's enemy. And the devils will come after you. So if we have this at the back of our mind and we can trust God, he will see us through. So all those challenges we are seeing, they are just process that nobody told us about. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even Abraham, when God told him, you are going to become the father of the nation. He never told him, you are going to be how many years? 700 and something before you give birth to the promised child. Praise the Lord. So you should know that what you are going through, I always tell people, you better appreciate me now because me, I'm just passing through. It's just a transition. I'm not where I want to be. I'm not where God wants me to be. So be nice to me. I will be nice to you. So that when I get there, I'm sitting with the queen or the prime minister, then I will remember you. Praise the Lord. So I want you to remember me too. That is why I'm being nice. Amen. God help us as we understand this in Jesus' name. I jotted some things down, some points. That God decided not to show us the full pictures of our future because the process might intimidate us and we may abort the mission. Praise the Lord. If we know the process of how we are getting there, Okay, for example, I will use my life as an example. Before I got married, I can't even remember how many times I've been to all the embassies of this world. I want to travel abroad. <laughs> Praise Allah. Even when I met my wife, she was with me when I went for an interview. I was just struggling because when I was younger, they said, ah, okay, no, that was not the, what motivated me. I was my dad's favorite. He liked me so much. But when my cousins come from abroad, 
Everybody will just abandon me as if I never existed. They will concentrate on those guys as they are speaking uh, Queen's English. And people will not just, I will, I, it will be as if I'm a shadow or I didn't exist. So because of that, I had it at the back of my mind, I must travel. But I didn't know it would be so late that I won't be able to imitate their English. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Then I had it at the back of my mind, but the journey was so long, I, was, I didn't even tell my dad. They sent me to school. I was going from one embassy to another, applying for visa. I must get visa. And this man, he travels a lot. Even my mom travels, but they never took me along. I was waiting. The day you mistakenly take me along, I would just run away. You won't see me again. Hey, man, praise the Lord. Then the journey began. I was applying. But at the end of the day, none of them gave me visa. Until when the Lord said it is time. Even when I travel, I didn't even want to travel. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was as if I never even make any effort at all. I'm sure you all have your stories to say about this. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the process is not visible to us when they give us the vision. But if only we can stand with God and we can trust Him totally. When I was in secondary school, we used to have this uh, word Bible school. Is it word Bible school or word Bible, whatever? You write the stuff and they send you Bible. So I'm one of those ones that get Bible so much. And this, there, uh, there is another one they call our daily bread, which I read. Then a particular story I read, I can't even forget about it, that a father, the uh, book was telling us how to trust in God, to compare the love of a father to love of God, and I swear how a father was trying to teach his son not to trust anybody. And then the father put a young boy and put it on an edge and said, oh, my son, jump, I will catch you. And the boy said, no, I'm scared. He said, don't be scared, I'm your dad. Trust me, don't you trust me? Jump. And the boy jumped and the man stepped back and the boy fell. And the boy was saying, the father said, you see, don't trust anybody. You must learn that you must not trust anybody. But with God, it's not like that. Jesus was just like a man. He climbed the roof of the house. As he was trying to mend the house, there was an accident and he fell. But when he got down, he, he opened his eyes and nothing was wrong with him. Then he looked down and one of the lambs he was running at the house was below and he jumped on it and he was able to escape death and injury. So also Jesus, anytime you fall from the top, he's below waiting for you to take you. If only you can trust him totally. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we have the understanding of this, the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, we may not know how strong we are in Jesus until strength is only is our only option. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To me, the interpretation of this to me, I will say, don't wait until when the trouble comes before you cry to God. And more so, at times we don't, we are not even praying. We are pitying ourselves. God, why me? If not you, who, who should it be? So you don't wait until when the problems comes. Be friends with Jesus. Get close to Him daily. Amen. And uh, some people say God doesn't speak to me, just like Elijah. He said, I look into the this. The voice was not coming from this. He was searching for where the voice of God was. But we have the voice of God already the Bible, the word. Amen. The more you read, it's just like our way of life. The more you read, the more understanding you get and the more you practice. Amen. Amen. Like me, I'm a support worker. I've been undergoing training for so many years now. In fact, I think like the, the people we take care of, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. At times when I want to com communicate with my son, at times I forget I'm not at work. <laughs> And even a colleague of mine said, I don't know how you do it. All these guys, they listen to you. You don't have any issues when you, uh, we don't have issues when you are around. And one, one lady said from a Ghana, I said, ah, it's because of your eyes. Your eyes look like a real one. When you twist your eyes like this. <laughs> and sincerely, ever since he, she said that, I've been thinking and I've been watching myself. At times, when one of them wants to misbehave, I said, and the, their brain will reset and they will do the right thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Then, 
I began to understand myself better. That, ah, this man, praise the Lord, God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. If the children of Israel knew there was wet sea in the way and 40 years to spend in the wilderness, they might have never left Egypt. Amen. If the children of Israel, they knew what they are going to face on the road to the promised land, trust me, they say, oh, I, I, there was a particular time they were telling uh, Moses, well, I, we don't know why you brought us out from Egypt. So you brought us there to come and suffer us. Amen. But they, they didn't get the understanding that there will be no um, distinction with that examination. So if you want to get past, then you must, see, you must have sat for an, sit for an exam. Praise the Lord. So we have to understand this, that what we are going through is just preparing us for the future. At times, some of the things I told my wife, you remember when we were uh, going through some of the things? Like you see me now, there was a time I was homeless. I had no house, I had no place to be. And this is me, before I got homeless, there was a flat that my dad gave to me. I was living, I have about 15 friends living with me. Amen. But when I was homeless, nobody. And I was thinking, ah, where did I, where, who did I offend self? Amen. Amen. But it was later I began to understand God was preparing me for a greater thing. Amen. Like I am now. I always tell people at my place of work, if you like, like me. If you like, don't like me. My own is just to come here, do my work and collect my salary. I don't even care. But those ones I'm doing, God is preparing me so that by the time I'm talking to the kings and queen herself so that they can listen to me, they would ah, this man is talking from experience. Praise the Lord. God help us as we understand this in Jesus' name. Amen. God knows how much you can handle today. And as long as you keep following God, you are going to get there. And you will not even know how you did manage because it takes the grace of God. Like I said about the visa, I was going from one place to another. I could remember there was a time I applied for the program in Germany. And they said, ah, it was a friend that introduced, God introduced me to it. And out of all of them, they picked me. And they were angry that, but we invited you now. They didn't pick us. I said, I'm sorry. And they sent me documents to go to the embassy. Then I got my passport. No, I didn't have my passport. I went to the embassy first. And the interview was successful. And they gave me a day to come with my passport. That very day, I ate, I prayed, then I was going. Then the police stopped me and said, stop there. I, what do you have in your pocket? I said, my passport. Your passport, let me see. And the man, it was a virgin passport. And the man said, where did you get this visa? I said, which visa? There's no visa. I said, I'm going to the embassy to get this. I said, no, there's a visa. Come to the station, you must explain yourself. Said, ah, there's no visa. And I began, people help me. Oh. <laughs> Please come and help me. Come and help me see this thing. There's no visa in my passport. And he's telling me there's a visa. Nobody came to my head and they took me to station and they locked me up. <laughs> and I, I, it was around 8 p.m. when my brother came to bail me out. I couldn't go to them, but the following day I went to them and said, no, you missed the appointment, we are sorry. Come next year. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God help us. <laughs> Amen. But what am I saying? Whatever you are going through, God must have known that you can bear it. That is why he is called the Alpha, the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. You know, there, is, there are some questions which, there is another question that pop up in my mind. I'm still waiting for a reply from God. God, you created Garden of Eden. You put Adam. You put Eve. And the devil came. Where were you when the devil came? You didn't show up. When Eve ate the apple, you knew you didn't show up and you waited for Adam to eat the apple and you now came to judge them. I'm still going to ask God, why? Praise the Lord, but he's Alpha and Omega. Like I said, it, it, there was a portion of the Bible we are going to read. He said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Even uh, Isaac and Jacob, they were in the womb when God said, Jacob I love, Esau I hate. So who are we to ask God? Amen. God help us as we get the understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 26. 
verse 38 and 39. Matthew 26, verse 38 and 39. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch me, watch with me, verse 39. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it was possible, let his God pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will. What else you Amen. That was who? Jesus. Jesus. Are you agree with me? It was Jesus. Because he saw the future. He saw the process. I said, Oh God, I wish you can take this cup away from me. So also as as we are, if God should show you your future with the process, we will back off. Even Jesus himself wanted to <laughs> Amen. He is God. God himself said, I wish you can take it, but not my will, but your will. Amen. So the process will come, and God will grant us the grace to go through the process so that we can get to our destination. Amen. Praise the Lord. Another passage in the Bible, Exodus 33, about Moses. Exodus 33, Verse 14. It's going to be a short message anyway. <laughs> Exodus 33, verses 14 to 19. And he said, My father shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy father go not with me, have it all not up to end. For where shall it be known here that I and thy people are found great in thy sight? Is it not in that thou thou dwellest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the field of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by thee. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on you, I will show mercy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So yeah. if we are talking about the process, the part that is difficult, in order to get to our destination, so we need the presence of the Lord. I always share this story. I won't forget it. It was said by uh, Daddy Adeboe. He was talking about the presence of God. And he talks about three fishes in the ocean. A lot of fishes. But there's this particular three fishes that was being focused and he said they had the opportunity to be in the presence of God and God asked them each of you ask what you want and all of them shouted ah God there is this big shark in the ocean when it comes he's, he's hungry looking for other fishes to eat God help us and God said that is why I'm asking you what do you want me to do for you just like Jesus Christ asked the blind man Despite the fact that Jesus Christ knew that he was blind, he said, what, do you, what will you have me to do for you? He said that I may see. So Jesus has the three fishes. What do you want? The first one says, God, if you can give me power, so that when the, uh, the shark comes, I will jump out of the water. And it was granted. And the shark came, this fish jumped out of the water. And somebody like me saw a big fish on the field. <laughs> I'm hungry, you are hungry. And I pick it up, roasted it, and ate it. Praise the Lord. And the second one asked God, if you can give me wings so that I can fly out of the water. And he actually flew out of the water when the shark came. And the orc saw it. Eagles. They grabbed it and slaughtered. And the third one said, oh God, I wish I can have your presence with me. And the shark came. Other fishes were running. And the shark was running from this particular fish. And they were wondering, what is going on? Because no, they, they, they couldn't recognize the presence of the Lord that was with the fish. So when you have the presence of the Lord with you, everybody bows. Evils will go away from you. Amen. So in order to take this journey of us to our destination, the process we are talking about, we need the presence of the Lord to go with us. Praise the Lord. And as we all understand this, the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
there's this young man. I will say he's being childish. He said, he planned his life. I planned my life. I've been planning my life since I was young. Where I am today, I plan my life. Let's open a Bible, a Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Verse 16. From verse 16 to 31. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This is this will I do. I will pull down my bonds and be greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So, thou as much goods lays up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that lay up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Praise the Lord. That particular man of God I'm talking about, he said, I'm rich. I've got so many. I can't even accommodate them all. So let me rebuild my warehouse so that I can have enough space to accommodate what I've been able to acquire myself. So if you think what you've got today is by your power, you've forgotten that God, it was God that saw you through, then you must be a fool. I'm sorry to use that word, but that, that, that is what the Bible said. Oh, thou fool. You need the presence of God. You need to acknowledge God in every of your process, in every thing you are, do, you are doing in life, so that God can see you too. Don't be like this young man that said, yes, I'm rich now. I can just relax and began to enjoy what I've made in life. Praise the Lord. And God said, your soul shall be required from thee. Tonight, you are going to die. Praise the Lord. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 22. And he said unto his disciple, Therefore I said unto you, Take no thought for your life, for what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor man, and God feed them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thought can add to his t- statue one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today is the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will they clothe you? All ye of little faith. And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubt mind. For all these things do the nation of the world seek after. And your father knew that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the word of Jesus to the disciple. Amen. He's not saying you should not work. You should not have savings. But that shouldn't be your primary objective. Even at, at the end of, of it, he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Which means in your journey of life, whatever you are doing now, you must be heavenly conscious. You must be God conscious. God must be first of everything. Amen like the topic we had last week about Solomon in Sunday school, I wanted to say something about because of time. <clears throat> I saw some posts on Facebook about Pierre Edoche, 
the son of a doce having a second wife. And some pastors, that, they started coming up and said, prove to us where God is against polygamy. But I don't really like to argue with people because some of them, me, I argue to understand. I argue to learn more. But some people, they want to argue to embarrass you, to insult you, to throw words. Praise the Lord. But I will have told them, but when God created the heaven and the earth, he created everything. Then he created a man and a woman. Why not created a lot of women so that Adam can enjoy his life? That Monday, you are to look and come into your room. Tuesday, you are devouring your tongue. Amen. Praise the Lord. It wasn't like that. So which means God wanted to be one man, one woman. Because at the end of the day, the children will suffer. I know how I grew up, like I've said, a father, seven wives. He was rich. We were from the royal family. And we have our mansions. We enjoy it. We have our apartment. But that's not the issue. I know what we went through. Even when my mom died, I was so young. Then I learned. There was a day I decided to drink kerosene. I want to die and go and meet my mom. Praise the Lord. God help us in Jesus' name. So as we get understanding of what the Bible is saying, he says, seek ye for the kingdom of God. And every other thing, you want to buy a car, you want to buy a house, whatever you want, he will do it for you. Or in this journey, the process, you need God. You need to be conscious of him that everything you've achieved so far, God has given you the grace. Amen. As we understand this, God help us in Jesus' name. To wind it up, we are going to pray. God, let your presence guide me through the process. The presence, you need the presence of God to guide you, guide you through the process. You cannot do it by yourself. If you think you are cap capable, you are deceiving yourselves. Guide me through the process of God with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. The second prayer point says, let your grace abound unto me. Let your grace abound unto me. In every area of your life, you need the grace of the Lord. Let your grace abound unto me. In Jesus' name we pray. The last one says, let me be heavenly conscious. Establish your kingdom in my heart. Let me be heavenly conscious, O oh God. If you are heavenly conscious and you are with God and God is with you, there is a song we sing, there is no mountain that we can't move. When I say we, I mean Jesus and I. When I walk with Jesus and he's with me, there is no mountain that we can't move. Even when people are gossiping about you, you don't even care because you are with Jesus. Whatever they say you are, you, you are doing or you did, and you know you, did, you didn't do it, and you believe in God, trust me, it will fight your case. In Jesus' name we pray. And so, Heavenly Father, King of Lord, Lord, we bless you because you are God. Thank you for the word that came from the throne of grace. Like I have said before, we will be the door of the world, not just the ear or the speaker, in Jesus' name. Every word we've had so far will not stand against us at the day of judgment, in Jesus' name. The grace and your presence that will help us through the process to get to our destination, you give to us, in Jesus' name. Like Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with us, we are not going to leave this place. Lord, I pray that your presence will go with your children in Jesus' name. We bless you because you are God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.